When it comes to the T-1 tank, many military enthusiasts may know about the American T-1 Cunningham light tank, which, although not very impressive, has its own unique features. However, what many people do not know is that there was another tank called the T-1, also designed by Cunningham, officially known as the Cunningham T-1. The T-1 and T-1 have fundamentally differences. It was an experimental tank built by the Cunningham father and son in 1928, slightly later than the T-1. The reason for its construction was that at the time, Various European countries were actively developing a series of light and ultralight armored vehicles, and the Cunningham Company also wanted to keep up with this trend of development. Unlike conventional tanks, the T-1 is more like an armored vehicle. It is powered by a 42-horsepower Ford Model A four-cylinder car engine, and its propulsion system only has four large-size wheels covered with tracks, without additional idler wheels and track support wheels. The driving wheels are a pair of front wheels. The tank body is like a large iron box, with the rear half higher, serving as a combat room, with a circular hatch on top for entry and exit. The overall armor protection is very weak, with a maximum thickness of no more than 3.17 mm, only slightly stronger than a regular private car, which is understandable, considering it is just an experimental tank. The T-1 is also equipped with a weapon, a 7.62mm coaxial machine gun mounted on the front of the combat room, providing basic firepower, similar to the configuration of a Bren gun carrier. The Cunningham T-1 experimental tank weighs about 1,360kg, with a length of 2,620mm, width of 1,450mm, and height of 1,550mm. The thickness of the front, rear, and sides of the vehicle body is all 3.17 mm. In tests conducted in 1928 under the supervision of representatives from the U.S. Army, the tank achieved a top speed of 31 km per hour. The T-1 ultimately did not lead the United States to develop a light armored vehicle, as it did not perform well in tests, had poor driving and handling capabilities, and seemed unreliable for the production of reinforced armored models. It was eventually abandoned, only participating in some other experiments, such as testing rubber tracks, and so on. Compared to the light-tracked vehicles in Europe at the same time, Cunningham clearly did not find the essence of light armored vehicles. When designing such armored vehicles, countries such as Britain had a clear purpose, which was to use them for miscellaneous tasks, without expecting them to have strong combat capabilities, but rather to tow light artillery, transport ammunition, serve as mobile machine gun vehicles, and handle traffic and communication as a supplement to armored forces. This approach proved to meet the needs at the time, as during World War II, the British Army continued to use a large number of such vehicle models, while the United States had to obtain authorization from Britain for production to meet the needs of frontline troops.